Is there anyone alive at there? Hi there, hope all is fine. I want to make a video about microphones. Most of you would agree that a bad audio is harder to make useful than a bad picture. So the right gear and the right environment will save you a great deal of time. And to be honest, more people will stop watching your video if you have bad audio. I won't be speaking about music production though. For vocals and instruments, it would need a full separate video. I will try to share with you my experience with dialogue, voiceover and vlogging voice recording. But in all those cases, you can always mix and match too, according to your preferences if you know the benefits and setbacks of the mic of your choice for the environment you are in. I will take a step back and explain some fundamentals. This will be a beginner section for audio so you can skip to the next section if it's too basic for you. Afterward I will list the ups and downs of some of the microphones and in the end it will be the conclusion part with use cases and my recommendations for it. First of all, aside from additional functions like USB powered microphones, microphones are only designed to deliver the voice signal. It doesn't convert the signal to digital or record it. You would need an interface to make sense of that data. Not only that, you need to bring the signal to a hearable level. Most of the microphones would need a 48 volt phantom power to work, which is a function available on most of the audio interfaces and preamps. That function can be harmful to microphones that don't need it though, like ribbon microphones or dynamic microphones. They don't provide the power by themselves, but by design they just work with the preamp. That's why they need a powerful preamp. And luckily, there are usually preamps already in most of the cameras with video function and a microphone input. And of course, they are not designed for professional studio microphones. I am talking about the consumer level mirrorless cameras, not the big Hollywood ca cinema cameras. The preamps in the mirrorless cameras are usually not so good. As much boost they provide to the volume, they also add as much unwanted noise of the preamp. There are audio interfaces and preamps to use with your laptop or PC or your camera too. And you can even have a device for your laptop or PC, use a cable to connect the line out or even headphones out of your device to your camera's microphone input for your video recording. Or you can always record the video and audio separately and stitch them together while editing. I guess this video will be a bit longer than anticipated. Without overdoing it, let's get to the microphones. I didn't know how to categorize them, so I will just say the ups and downs of the types of the microphones. And in the end, we can summarize the situation you can use them in. Dynamic microphones are the most user-friendly ones for indoor usage and if you have the proper preamp to support them. That's why you would see the infamous Shure SM7B in most podcasts and talking head YouTube videos, like this one. It seems to be the standard for content creators. However, they are a bit on the expensive side for the new starters. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> there are so many microphones for more than a thousand dollars, but I believe if you are not an audiophile and just trying to get your channel started, you wouldn't want to pay four hundred dollars for a microphone. And it doesn't end there. Dynamic mics are already power hungry, SM7B is one of the worst about that. If your audio interface or preamp device is not powerful enough, usually you would need something like a cloud lifter to boost the signal coming from the microphone, which would cost around an additional $100. But be sure to check YouTube if your audio interface can be enough to boost SM7B. There are so many good options in $200 price range that wouldn't need a cloud lifter. I guess we are a bit off topic here, but I wanted to mention SM7B because it's everywhere. And when we are talking about dynamic mics, I feel like I have to mention the next part. I think for the price performance ratio, Shure SM57 might be a better choice. This microphone is probably one of the most used microphones in history, from USA's presidents to most of the rock stars. It's reliable and literally built like a tank. Search YouTube to see a bus running over it and it still works perfectly. Another reason is it has the same capsule as the SM7B and costs one fourth of the price, around $90 I believe, and doesn't need as much boost as it either, so it's much more likely that you won't need a cloud lifter with it. Probably you will 
save additional $100. You can watch Julian Krause's video for how to make SM57 sound like SM7V with just EQ if you definitely want SM7B sound that is. And if you are interested in sound equipment in general, definitely watch his other videos too. So all this talk and still didn't start talking about dynamic microphones. It will probably take too long. But now the real topic of the video. What are the benefits of dynamic mics? As I said, they are the most user-friendly ones because they are the most forgiving of the environment you are recording in. They need to be closer to your sound source to capture all the frequencies of your sound accurately. And that's why they will be visible in your video too. It wouldn't be wise to have it further away and out of your shot because they would lose the advantage of not recording the rest of the noise. It doesn't do that magically by separating the noise of the room and your speaking. By nature, they are very quiet. So when they are close to your mouth and when you bring the gain level to a reasonable level, it doesn't capture the background noise as much as other microphones as it's already not so sensitive. But if you are going to put it further away, that means you need to crank the gain and that will also make other sounds volume higher too, naturally. We will end up decreasing the contrast between the room noise and your sound and by doing so, we will also lose the advantage of using the dynamic microphones. As this video is more focused on new YouTube channels, I will focus more on on-camera shotgun mics. There are other popular options, but it will take too much unnecessary time probably. By definition, shotgun microphones always feels like the best choice for YouTubers. And with the high demand of content creators, there are literally new models every day because shotgun mics are designed for capturing the sound in front of the microphone and reducing all the noises coming from the sides. That's good practice for us, right? But the points to be considered here are first, they are designed for the cases if the microphone cannot be just in front of the sound source. In our case, the person. So they are more sensitive to sound than dynamic mics. And that means they will capture more of the room noise even if you keep the gain level slow. The second issue is related to the first one too. Because the microphone is expected to be further than a dynamic microphone and rejects the sounds from the sides, if you put the microphone too close to the subject, it will not record all the sound our subject is emitting. And that will take away some color of your tone and might even sound a bit muted and muffled. Think it like a 50mm lens. To get the same frame with a 24mm lens, you got to take some steps back. So for outside vlogging, they make sense as you keep the camera further away and probably having a tiny bit of the surrounding sound might even complement the picture. It will bring more life to it. I mean, if a car is passing by you, the brain expects to hear at least some of it, right? Otherwise, it might feel like dubbed. But of course, there should be a good amount of volume difference between your speech and the background. I have two of them with me. For budget and small size, Movo VXR10 and lots and lot more functionality and relatively money, Rode VideoMic NTG. Although there are so many people who use Rode VideoMic for small and budget, Movo is cheaper and to be honest, I think it sounds better. But that's something you should decide by watching reviews of them. There are really convenient things about the Movo and Rode VideoMic. And I think it might even be the only microphone you need for so many cases. They don't need charging or battery, they are always on, they sound acceptable and they are really small and mobile. They heavily depend on the camera preamps though. If you have a camera whose preamp is noisy, this might be a problem. For those cases, mics like Rode VideoMic NTG bring more quality to your sound because they usually have their own booster powered by an internal battery. In some cases like Sennheiser MK400, they would work with AAA batteries. Some of the new microphones like NTG automatically turn on and off with the camera. But for most of them, you should always check if you turned on the mic too. And of course, if you always keep them on, they will run out of juice and half of your video might be without a single sound. And because they are bigger, the more expensive ones are usually better at getting more of the frequencies. And that's always better. Think of it as the dynamic range of the video. I think it's even more than that. There is a term in music production for vocals larger than life and those are usually 
usually have something to do with good frequency response. Another useful thing about ROD NTG is the USB-C connection. Even if you don't have an audio interface, you can use ROD NTG via USB connection to your computer and have a great sound in your Zoom calls. That alone might be a decisive factor for some people, but I will talk more about it at the end of the video. I don't know what to say about lav mics. I mean, I think they're practical and really useful, but I always choose not to use them. It's like a love and hate relationship. I will try to be unbiased and tell you about them. Lavalier mics are the really small ones you see attached to the clothing of the person. They are really great for moving, walking people, as the distance from the source to the microphone is not so much affected by the movement of the sound source, because it's attached to it. <laughs> there are really cheap, good options for the cabled ones. The only one I have right now is Boya. I think it's cheaper than $20 and it sounds great for what they are. Of course, you can buy a Sennheiser for more than $100, but I never tried it. For the wireless options, the price gets a bit more, of course. Rode Wireless Go is very popular and loved by so many people, and the price is not as much as other good ones, around $170. There is a caveat to them, of course. There are really good options, but as they are too small, you can never expect a sonically pleasing sound like a large condenser microphone. For most cases, 90% of the people wouldn't notice the difference maybe. But the video is about microphones, I can't just say. They all record sound and be done with it. And while attaching and wearing it, you must be careful not to move or rub it, otherwise it will be a really unpleasant sound in your video. Small diaphragm condenser microphones are also called pencil condensers. And they look like shotgun mics, but there are some fundamental differences and use cases in fact. Shotgun mics have longer tubes to help them get more focused audio, but doing that gives the advantage of rejecting the noise from the back to the pencil condensers. Also pencil mics don't have the artificial sight noise rejecting, which makes the sound more natural on closer cases. Of course there would be situations for you to choose either of them, and please try before deciding as you might like one better. What I'm mostly trying to say is there is no one mic for every situation. Pencil condensers also need 48 volt phantom power. They can probably make one with a built-in battery, but I don't know any. The only one I have is right now Octava, so it's recording through my audio interface to the computer. I can say everything I said for the shotgun mic if it could have been directly connected to the camera. So I will keep this short and get to the conclusion part. I left so many things to the conclusion part and now I feel like I can't summarize it, but let's try. In the beginning, I want to say something very clear. If you are not sure that you will keep doing this for a long time, or if there is a possibility that you will get bored of it, don't overdo it. You might plan to record with your mobile phone, use your headphones microphone, or if you really want to buy something, try Boya Lavalier mic or maybe Movo VXR10 shotgun mic. They are on the cheap side and really they would already be more than enough for quite some time. I mean, it would be even good for channels with 1 million subscribers. When you wanna level up, you can always find free tutorials on how to record better and doing better post-processing. And afterward, if you feel like that's not enough, you probably will already know what you need. On the other hand, if you know, you will keep doing this or if you wanna sound a bit better, or you are sure you wanna spend more. What are you gonna do most of the time? And what do you already have? Let's say you are a tech reviewer, mostly in a room and not much moving around, like what people call talking head videos, and you don't have an audio interface. An on-camera shotgun mic might be a good option here. For the best results, you shouldn't leave the microphone on the camera. If you could extend the cable and boom it above your mouth, you would get oh sorry, <laughs> you would get much better results. And you can always have it in the frame to get it even closer. I know I said it, it might not be good to get shotgun mic really close to your mouth, 
but in some cases it might be even more suitable for your voice. It can make it more booming, which is in fact considered as a positive effect for thinner voices. I also said that you could use Rode VideoMic NTG as a microphone for your computer too. But here we have another option. You can find a good microphone plus an audio interface for around the same price. We already said you will do talking head videos only, so you can practically get a Shure SM57 for around $100 and Audient ID4 Mark II for $140. You now have a great audio interface, which you can even plug your musical instrument or when you decide to change your microphone or have another one, an interface that can power it properly. In addition, much better headphone amps than your onboard sound card most likely. It would be different if you wanna do outside vlogs though. Here a shotgun mic would allow you to be mobile much easier, but to be able to use Shure SM57 outside you would need a preamp in between your camera and the mic. And frankly if you are not doing TV news like interviews, there is no point in that. If you wanna be minimalist and not wanna think so much, Rode VideoMic NTG will cover you indoors and outdoors with no problems. But I would go with SM57 and the Movo shotgun mic probably, or maybe Boya lavalier mic if you are okay with the cables. There is another case. You will only use it outside and want the best of the best. A high tier shotgun mic like VideoMic NTG is the way to go then. Let's get back to indoor recording. You decided on an audio interface and a mic or you already have an audio interface. I have some other questions then. Is your room treated properly? Does it have too much echo? If it's not treated and you don't mind the microphone in the frame in front of you, we already have the answer, SM57. But let's say you don't want to have the microphone in front of you. You are gonna do product reviews and it will be in the way or you just don't like it aesthetically. Then a shotgun or pencil condenser might be the answer. But for that, I will ask another question. Is your room really big or small? For small rooms, pencil condensers will be a better way to eliminate unwanted noises and you will sound more natural. But if your room is big and treated enough, shotgun mics are great choices too. I think that's more or less what I can say about this. It will always come down to personal preferences, recording conditions, and sadly, to your budget. There are two points I want to underline. First, sound is much harder to clean than video. You should do it while recording and not think like you can save it in post-processing. For example, if you have a loud computer, you should turn it off. If you can't turn it off like me, you might consider buying more quiet fans like Nocto or Be Quiet. Also, you can use some blankets outside of the frame to lessen the room's echo and the noise. Close the windows, etc. Second, there is no perfect gear. Whatever positive they bring, they come with a negative. There are expensive Neumann large condenser microphones. They sound brilliant, but they are sensitive to every little detail. If you use them in an untreated room, they will also brilliantly capture every echo in the room. And they will sound worse than a Shure SM57. But if it's the echo you want to capture, then you won't hear them so much in SM57. That probably will be my longest video till now and I hope I didn't lose so many of you while watching. But mostly I hope it was helpful to some of you. If you watch till the end, I think you are one of the greatest people on earth, definitely. I sincerely thank you for sticking out till now and wish you the best of the best sound quality in all your videos. Till the next one, have a great day and ciao for now.